Hey everybody, this is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, and in this video I'm going to show you how to add a Facebook like button to your WordPress site. This is going to be the manual way of doing it instead of using a plugin. So the first thing you have to do is find the, the Facebook page where they allow you to get the code to do the Facebook plugin. So I always go to Google because Facebook has a habit of changing URLs to things. So if you bookmark it, it might break the bookmark. So I always default to Google and I search for Facebook like button. And then as you can see, I always click on this first one here because it's in purple, like button, Facebook developers. Now you do need a Facebook developers account, which I'm not gonna go into how to make one in this video, uh, but it's really straightforward and it's free. And then once you do have the developers account, you can create the like button on this page. And all you do is fill in these four fields and check these two boxes to create your like button. And down in this area here, it shows you what it looks like. So it gives you a live preview of the like button itself and even how many people like it. So the URL you enter here, it will display how many people like that URL already here. So chances are if you're doing this for a new site, you won't see any likes at all, but that's okay because you have to start somewhere. So uh, we're going to do this on our demo site, which is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash WP dash PhD.com. Now that's our, that's the demo site that I use for, for demoing things like this. As you can see, the likes have been updated to be the first of your friends to like this. A very positive message, much better than saying zero. So after you've done that, you can set the width. If you have a really, really defined space, you're going to want to set the, the width pretty small. You can set it to 50 pixels and then tab out of that and then it, it shrinks the size. For me, I've always found the default width is good enough. So I just leave it at the default width. For the layout, you have the options of standard, box count, button count, and button. And I'll quickly show you what each one of these is. Box count has a box on top with a zero right now for the number of likes, but that'll update when you have more likes. There's button count, which has it horizontal. And then just the buttons with no count, no text. So we're going to choose the standard one for now. And you can choose the action type. You can use like or recommend. So it changes the text in this button right here. I've rarely seen a site with the recommend button. And nobody says recommend this on Facebook. Everybody says like this on Facebook. So I would not recommend using the recommend just because nobody talks that way. You want to you want to make sure your site um, follows the, the jargon and the lingo that people use. So if you want people to like your page, make it a like button. But on the other, on the other hand, if you're, you're trying to change the world and you want people to recommend your page, make a recommend button and see if that works. But I don't think it will work as well as a like button. You can check this box to either show or not show your friends' faces. Well, not your friends, but the friends of whatever... Um, page has been liked so if your friend Sally likes this page she, her face will show up here however if if Bob goes by the the website and he's not friends with Sally Sally's picture won't show up so it's not like those those plugins where you see a whole bunch of Facebook little thumbnails they call it's called the face pile in the sidebar where it shows just a bunch of people who have liked that page this will only show you if your friends have liked that page and this checkbox shows you whether to show the share button or not. It's up to you. Both are fine. Uh, you can even test it to see which one gets better response. So after you've chosen these settings, which, I mean, I've, I've babbled on for a little while, but it shouldn't take you more than 30 seconds to, to choose these settings. You click on Get Code. And if you're not logged in, it'll say, please log in to continue. So I'll just log into my account. And then we have to redo all, all this again. That's not hot. Okay, all done. Click Get Code. Now we have the option 
Uh, when you create your developer's account, you will be creating an app for your page. So I've got the app for the WP Learning Lab, which I'm just going to use for this case. Uh, but you have the option of choosing HTML5, XFBML, iframe, or URL. So the URL, as it says here, uses URL in an iframe or as a link to your plugin. So the iframe option and the URL option are actually the same thing. So you can copy this URL and have a URL on your page or just use, if you want the button to actually appear on your page, you use the iframe. So you highlight that, copy it, and we'll just make a little test page over here. Add new post. Copy that in, click on preview, and now if everything went right, it should show us the buttons. And there it is. These are the like and share buttons, which we just copied and pasted into this page. So this is all good and fine if you want the button to show up on just one page. So you'd have to copy, or multiple pages, you have to copy and paste this iframe code into every single page you want to show up in. Or, alternatively, you can put it into the theme files. Now there are various ways you can do this. Some are more right than others. I'm just going to show you the quick and dirty way, which is go to appearance, go to editor, and this will, I don't recommend you work directly in the editor when you're doing this, you should have an FTP, you should have uh, backups just to make sure if something goes wrong, you can upload the backed up version and your site is still fine. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to put that code into the footer, uh, just through the editor, quick and dirty. So here we have the footer, HTML5 opening for the footer. I'm just going to copy and paste that iframe code directly after that opening. Click on update file. And now that Facebook uh, like and share button should show up at the bottom of every single page. So we go back to here, refresh, and let's see if that works. Yeah, there it is, like and share. Obviously it's not pretty, I just copied and pasted it in. You're gonna have to, if you wanna do it that way, you're gonna have to put a little more thought into it and think about the design and think about where this would work the best. I'll just show you how to get into the theme file. So if we go to uh, the business category and we go to the bottom, there it is again. So it's going to show up on every single page that the footer.php file is included on, which is usually for a WordPress site, every single page. Every, every page has a footer with a disclaimer and, and links to privacy and sitemap and stuff like that. So that's how you can get it onto every page of your site. I'm going to take that back out, save that. You also have the option of using XFBML and HTML5. These are a little more difficult to do, but they allow you a little more uh, flexibility in how they can be executed. So for the XFBML, you have to copy this first part after the opening body tag. So select all that and copy. And then again, we're just in the editor. I recommend that you do this through an FTP and have backups and, and make sure if something breaks, you can just upload the old file. Or better yet, you have a, a test site, a dedicated test site that's running on your computer or just a, a demo.com. Like I have the wp-phd.com where I, I demo a bunch of stuff. So you're not working on your live site. Because it's always very hair raising when the live site breaks and you don't know why. It's not a lot of fun. So as the instructions said, copy that code, paste it right after the body tag. So here's the opening body tag. And we will paste it right there. And this one has my app ID right here. Yours will be different. Everything else will be the same for what you're copying and pasting in here. So update that file. Then we have two more things to paste. So we want to create the XML namespace on the HTML tag of the document. So we'll copy this. And that will usually also be in the header file. So here's 
HTML, we have a bunch of different versions. This one is shown if the user has IE7. This one's shown if it's IE8. This one is shown if it's not IE7 or IE8. And here's the doc type HTML. But we want to paste that piece of code into this HTML tag, or all three of those actually. So Facebook gives us the whole HTML code. We just want to copy out this XM, XMLNS part. So we'll just cut that out. We will delete that tag. And we will simply copy and paste it. Put it right after the class. Copy and paste it into that one. Into that one. And into that one. So you may only have one HTML opening tag. All this stuff varies greatly depending on which theme you're using. So as, as Facebook said over here, it is necessary for this to work to have that tag in there uh, for early versions of Internet Explorer. So IE7, Internet Explorer 7, Internet Explorer 8, those are earlier versions. But we just put it throughout um, because this one will load also if it's IE6 or IE5, which barely anybody uses, but some people do. So you want to put this tag into all of them, all of the occurrences of the HTML tag. So, and then the last thing we do is we can place this code where we want the like button to appear. So we copy and it's going to click update on this again just to make sure it's updated. So we can go back to our post, create a new post, xfbml test, and we'll copy, or sorry, we'll paste that code in. And if everything went properly, went smoothly, we should see the, the Facebook like and share buttons up here. And there it is. So again, I copied and pasted that into a post. You would probably more than likely want that to appear on a page or on a, on a post page, so in the template, so it appears on every single one. And how you do that, I'm gonna go back in the editor. Again, use an FTP, back up your junk, make sure you don't break it. If you do break it, make sure you have a backup to upload it. But we're gonna go into the single post, the single.php file and we are going to paste that, uh, that like button right at the very top of the post. So here you see is the start of the loop. So this is where the post content will be pulled in. So right above that, but inside the content div, I'm going to paste that code that Facebook gave us. And now, this should appear on every single, after we save, it should appear on every single post page. So on this one, it'll be twice because we already put it in the content. So there's, this is the one that's in the template. And this is the one that we just put inside of the WordPress post page. So if we go to the hello world page, we have the like button up here and the, and the share button. So that's how you get it into your template. And the HTML5 button is much the same. This part is actually, I believe it's identical to the XFBML. I haven't compared them uh, character for character, but I believe it's identical. And then same thing with this, you just paste it to where you want the, the like button to appear. This part is not identical. As you can see for the XFBML, it's got um, FB colon like for the tag, whereas the HTML5 tag is just a div. But again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show you how this works because I just showed you with the XFBML. Just copy this into the the header file right after the body tag, as it says in the instructions. Paste this wherever you want the like button to appear, and that's it. You've just integrated the Facebook like button manually. I hope this video served you. I encourage you to hit the subscribe button so you get notification whenever I publish a new video. Like us on Facebook so you get notification whenever I publish a new post. And if you have specific problems that you need help with, either with this video or with, with whatever relating to WordPress or websites, just leave a comment somewhere on social media or below this video or on our site, and I will answer your comments as soon as I can. 
If you have specific content you want, if you have specific problems you need worked out or stuff you want to learn, let me know and I will create that. Again, my name is Bjorn Alpass from WPLearningLab.com. Subscribe and like and I will see you next time.